What is up, everybody? My name is Austin Buckner. Trevor Holder. And I'm Bobby Koontz from Anime Fix. And we are here on location at Anime Fix inside Mall of America. We decided to make another trip to uh, to Minneapolis, mostly come see this beautiful man over here. Um, but by proxy, we got an opportunity to meet you, uh, learn a little bit more about your store, which was just an unbelievable so much experience. Fun. So yeah, much fun. Yeah. I yeah. love it. And I love your guys' love of the older stuff, too. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I, yeah. I don't get that nearly as much. Yeah. So we talked a, a, a lot about the so store. for being old. <laughs> <laughs> a lot about uh, just your history with, with the store itself and, and bringing a, a second location here to, to Minnesota. Um, and just got to nerd out for yeah. you know a good 40 minutes which is it's always my favorite part of this show right so, uh without further ado uh, sit back relax and enjoy this episode of the ice cream sunday podcast Bobby, tell us a little bit about Anime Fix and what people can find here if they come visit you at Mall of America. Uh, well, Anime Fix is obviously a retail anime store. We do some online, but we mainly focus on the retail experience. So we want you to come in and see the product, pick up the product, feel the product, look at it, make sure you're getting what you want. Um, but here in Mall of America, we have a little bit of everything from figures to posable figures to statues to prize figures gashapon stickers posters um don't do a lot of clothing except for joe stuff back here but um we do do a little bit of clothing but we mainly focus on the figures merchandise and we import everything straight from japan so we're getting it around the same time it releases over there so you're not waiting six months a year or something like that for a figure you saw released in Japan to come over here. So we're getting it usually awesome. within a few That's weeks, cool. a few weeks of it releasing over there. We're getting it over here. You know, shipping is an, always an issue. So I noticed a few model figures you had as well, like, um, like Gundam. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's kind of my brother's bread and butter. We always get Gundams, but they sell so fast. Here. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. I imagine. But I have another shipment. I have a big shipment coming in in a couple of weeks, so there'll be plenty more. Where, where did your your journey with anime start? What were some of the first ones that you watched, and oh. what did you first fall in love with? So Macross is probably the one that got me hooked. Yep. Uh, Robotech in the United States, you know, is what it was called. Um, but that got me hooked. Star Blazers, Macross, uh, Dragon Ball Z, of course, and stuff like that. So I'm I'm a child of the '80s of for my anime, uh, Ninja Scroll. Um, the original Gundam, yep. even Gundam Wing was probably the first one that really made it over here. That was still, you know, very big. But Gundam Wing was always my favorite. Yeah, that mo- yeah, I I always joke around that I can tell the age by what Gundam you like. You know, <laughs> I can be like, oh, you're around the, you know, you're around your 30s, you're around your 40s, you're, you know, you're, you know, oh, your original Gundam. Okay, you're probably 50, 60, you know, something like that. But like, you can always tell where they're at when they when they're like, oh, I love this Gundam. This is my favorite Gundam. Yeah, so it's always it's always an interesting um interesting what people like and you know each generation has their own set of animes in there sure but yeah but we're originally from florida so this is a mall of america minnesota is a new experience for me so we started in florida 17 years ago yeah 17 yeah we're on our 18th year so, and then this one's been open for three years now. So you cool. had a retail shop in... We still Florida. have a retail shop in Oh, Florida. wow. Okay. We have a big one. We've got the life-size statues in there now, the big gosh, the Gashapon machines, all that kind of stuff over in that Where's store. that at in Florida? Uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Okay. Kind of Tampa Bay area, if, you're, if anybody's familiar with Florida. Sure, sure. Like Tampa Bay area. We're closer to the beaches and stuff like that. Yeah. So we're in St. Petersburg, Florida. We've got a nice... Um, you know, 2,500 square foot store there. So oh, we have wow. a lot of stuff there. We're, you know, do events and stuff like that, have voice signings, all that kind of stuff. So Anime Fix itself started in Florida. Were you there at that store as well? Yeah. Oh, what, yeah. What I was always to, there. What brought you to Minnesota? Family. 
Okay, family. Sure. I moved up here for family, and then of course I needed something to do. So I'm like, well, I need something to do. Let's open another store. Yeah, and, I know how then, it works. Yeah, yeah, I've I've done this before. So <laughs> why it's, not? It's kind of crazy to me that this being the biggest mall in the yeah. United States, and yet for Anime Fix, this is kind of the satellite store. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah, then, yeah, and yeah. like the this bigger store is down in Florida. It's down in so. Florida, we, yeah, uh, where we started. Yeah, yeah. And that's always going to be my home store. I mean, I always have a love for that store because that's the one I started. I created from the ground up and, you know, ran by myself for, you know, five, six years by myself while I worked another job to get it all going and and all that good stuff. So it was it, it's always going to be my home store and the one I kind of love. So but, you know, this is a great store. We even have one in Ridgedale Center now. OK, so we just opened for the people who don't want to deal with Mall of America because I got a lot of a lot of that was like. I don't want to go into Mall of America. I just don't want to do it. And I'm like, <laughs> just pop into the West Exit. You're right there. We're yeah. right here. Third floor, West Exit. It's easy. I was going to say, so it's Joe easy. kind of gave us instructions on how to get here. Yeah. And because we have all of this equipment and he was like, you just park here. You come straight in. You walk. I mean, it's right there. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's very, very easy to find from the West Ramps. So. Yeah. It was one of the reasons I chose this location because I had like four to choose from. Okay. And when the mall was like, oh, you could go here, here, here. And I'm like. Ooh, that's right next to exits and so, yep, it's on the way in, it's yeah, on the way yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you talked about the Florida or I'm sorry, not the you know, here mm-hmm. getting figures directly from Japan. Yeah. Was that part of the inspiration oh excuse me. Part of the inspiration to open a store is like, you know, I want to get things and I want to provide that service, or, or what was the inspiration I, to opening that, that I, store in Florida? I will say it wasn't like, oh, I need it directly from Japan. It was the fact that when when I was shopping for stuff, I didn't know what a one eighth scale statue was. Okay. Versus a one seventh scale, uh, a a small plushie versus the medium plushies. What was the real difference? You can't really tell online because you you can't see them side by side. I mean, if you've done Gundams, yeah. you know that what's the difference between a high grade, a master grade, and a real grade. Somebody could tell you, but you can't see the size difference or the complexity difference unless it's physically in front of you. Yeah. And so I, it was more of the fact that you can come in and look at stuff. You can sure. physically sure. have it. And then you get the convenience of you don't have to wait three months for it to ship from Japan. You don't have to worry if it's a bootleg. Because you know you can look at it. It's got all the proper identifications, all the stickers, all the stuff like that. You know what you're getting when you buy it. So what's the process like going through ordering something from Japan, uh, making sure it's the right thing, uh, something that's trending as far as like what people are wanting? Trending is always the problem because there's – so Japan kind of – just like any series, you know, you're not going to get merchandise for something that – hasn't aired in a year, five years, 10 years. You know, we get a lot of people who are like, oh, where's my Evangelion stuff? And there's so little of it because they haven't had a new Evangelion since the the three point, the the 1.0 ones, the new You Cannot Advance ones came out. But they still release a little bit here and a little bit there. But a lot of these shows just not airing. Why make merchandise for it? You sure. Know? I always tell people like, Go find Game of Thrones merchandise right now. There's no Game of Thrones airing. Mm-hmm. You're not going to go find a, a Targaryen statue of, you know. Yep. Um, you know, so, like, it, it's it's the same concept. So we have to order when a show starts airing. We order it. Most merchandise comes out at the end of the first season. Okay. So if, like, say you, you're watching Chainsaw Man for the first time and you're watching it as it comes out in Japan – it's not going to get that first merchandise. It's not going to drop till the end of that first season. Usually the 13th episode is what I okay. consider the first season is like the right. 13 episodes. Then the merchandise is going to all start coming out at the end because, you know, you got to pre-order it and be like, okay, there you go. So sometimes it hits you good. You get like um, Chainsaw Man where you just can't get enough merchandise in. Sometimes you get a Tokyo Revengers, which, you know, then everybody just wants one character from it and nobody wants the rest of them. But you've already ordered all of them because you didn't know any better right. until it got popular. So it's a hit or miss. You know, sometimes you just got to be hopefully you're getting the right series. And then we also like to carry a variety. So if we, you know, if we get a figure in, we're getting all the figures in. We're not just getting in the one JoJo figure. Sure. We're getting all the different characters so we can get everybody. Is there a certain one that you've seen uh, 
kind of like a resurgence of like interest in? Um, it it kind of depends on if there's um, series. Uh, JoJo's definitely always resurging. It up and down. <laughs> um, uh, I'm trying to think. What, what would be a good resurgence one? Um, some of the '80s stuff has like really picked back up. Like when they do a reboot, like uh, Fruits Baskets. Oh, yeah. You know, cute comedy, but it got a big resurgence when the new stuff came out. Plus, we're also getting a lot of parents are now, you know, who grew up on it. You know, they were kids in the 80s, 90s, and they grew up on this, and now they're getting their kids into it. I literally, in our Florida store, have generational customers. That's, That's awesome. Cool. Their parents were coming in at like 15, 16, and now they're bringing their, their like five-year-old kid in and stuff like that. So, That's awesome. you know, it's, it's, it's really cool, but yeah. So you, you're starting to see parents are like, oh, but I want to show my kids this. And then you'll get a reboot um, or something like that. So it's, it's kind of helping the, some of the older stuff. You know, I've, I've noticed uh, a good variety. So like anywhere from my hero to, uh, Naruto to yeah. Attack on Titan to Final Fantasy Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Uh, even Resident Evil. Yeah, you to, saw little duckies. Yep. Yeah, those duckies are cute, aren't they? Me and Austin are huge Resident Evil fans. Uh, uh, Metal Gear as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, like, those obviously caught my eye. And then um, the one Play Arts uh, rude figure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. that caught my eye. I'm a big Final Fantasy guy, so... We got a whole bunch of Final Fantasy stuff coming in on the next shipment. Like, little acrylics mainly, but... Sure. For Final Fantasy VII. That, like, the reboot brought out a ton of Final Fantasy VII. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, absolutely. Just ton of stuff. Like, little things in here and there and so like that. But, I'm, yeah. I'm excited for the next one. I'm counting my days. I'm, <laughs> I want to play them. I just... I want to wait till they're all done, but I know that's going to be, like, five years. Yeah. And I'm like, do I want to wait that long? Yeah, I'll probably just play them, and then they've never come to Xbox. And uh, I'm a well. See, I think uh, they were talking about bringing out the um, remake mm. at some point, but it, it's kind of a rumor. But yeah. like, I was lucky enough. I was fortunate enough uh, that I have a caring enough wife that supports it, and uh, she got me the Soldier First Class Edition for a remake. Oh, nice! And I've been trying to con her into letting me get the. Uh, the big addition for, for, for the, rebirth for the next uh, the mm -hmm. one with the bike, uh, that's the one that came with is that the, the, the remake. Is yep. That the, yeah, I never. Remember and then uh, they are. this next one is Sephiroth. Oh, nice! Is he coming with anything or just just the Sephiroth figure? Just the figure, sword. Oh, nice! Like, yeah, it looks pretty sick. One of the coolest things that I got in the store was I don't know if you remember the the Advent Children movie. Oh, statue yeah. Statue with Sethroth and Cloud going up the building and destroying stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I got that in the store, and it was it was beautiful. It was, went through four four copies of it because they kept coming broken, like all the little oh. extra little pieces. So I was, like, sending them back to the distributor, sending them back to the distributor. Send, finally got one perfect, and I'm like, leave it alone. Leave it, don't touch it. Nobody touch it. It is absolutely bonkers how often that movie is mentioned on this podcast oh, it's really? like every third episode we talk about advent children um you talked about you know gener generations of mm -hmm. customers coming into that florida store is there a show or a series for you personally that you've continued to grow with over the years uh fist of the north star okay Ooh. is a great one that keeps doing new stuff with it in a different way that's a really good one that I, and then of course Macross always has a new series. I noticed that earlier too. And yeah, it always has a new series, and there it's gone a little more school idolish type okay. show yeah. away from the big mechs and the and the space drama. But it, that's a show that kind of stayed with me. You know, it's always there. And then Fist of North Star is always a good one that has kind of stayed with me because they keep bringing stuff out. So I can be sure, like, sure. oh, you're not really into this because you don't like the art style of the original one. Here, try this new one. It has a little bit better art. It has a little more cleaner art than when they were hand drawing stuff. You Absolutely. Know? And that's the other thing that kind of tweaks me a little bit is when people are like, oh, the art's so much better now. I'm like, yes, but that was drawn. Somebody was drawing each one of those waves. Yeah. You know, yeah, Naruto is clean because it's done on a computer. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. yep. You know, Fist of the North Star had, they had to draw all those waves, all those sand particles, all that kind of stuff. It's just like, you have to draw that, you know. See, I'm I'm a fan of like the kind of like the Adult Swim era yeah, of yeah. of anime. So you got Trigun, uh, Samurai Champloo, uh, mm -hmm. Big O, 
Did you see the um, big O figure? I did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Did you see how much it was originally priced at for when it came in? Huh. It was like seven ninety nine when it released like in 1994 or something like that. Wow. You know, and you're like, and now it's 150 bucks. Yeah. So yeah. It's like, yeah. But yeah, like the, the Toonami era is a great era. You know, mm. it was, that was almost the golden era of anime in the U.S. And then I would say now has surpassed that. Because it's become so much more mainstream. See, I was I was fortunate enough before uh, we hit that tsunami era where um, I was li- living up in Washington at the time, and the the two animes that I got into uh, were um, Gundam Wing mm-hmm. and um, Dragon Ball Z. Yep. And uh, very specifically for Dragon Ball Z, it was it wasn't um, English dub. So it was on the IFC channel way back when. Oh. Um, so it was. I was still getting the Japanese stuff, yeah. and it was uh, around the Boo Saga. Okay. So it was like Great Say a Man. It was, you know, Majin Vegeta, st- still one of my favorite arcs. Were you getting them edited on that channel? No. No. They, so they were showing the blood or the. Oh yeah. Door. Oh great. That's see, we didn't have it in my area, so. Yep, I was I, getting that. Um, and then. Years went on, and that's when it started getting more mainstream. That's mm-hmm. after Toonami um, came across IFC again. I was like, oh, yeah, let's see what they got. And uh, that's when they got me into Desert Punk. Oh, great series. Oh, so, so good. So funny. So funny. So underrated. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It was very short-lived, but it was yeah. solid. Yeah, it, it was – that. you know, that was your uh, – like Ergo Proxy was another good one that was around the same time. That was like a more cyberpunk-ish type one. Escaflone was yeah. another good yes. one. Yes, yes. So you have your typical um, paths to get into anime if you're an American. Yeah. You know, he talked about Toonami, obviously, you know, Pokemon, Final Fantasy games, Dragon Ball Z. What were the ways that you got into anime? Uh, anime conventions and bootleg – <laughs> <laughs> to date myself, bootleg beta copies. Interesting. The first copy, the first anything I ever bought was um, Akira Ooh. on a bootleg beta copy. I just watched that movie for the first time, maybe oh, within the last five great. years. It's still great. Yeah, we, I think we went to yeah, theaters for it. Still a great movie. Yeah, and um, it really kicked off my love of like all things cyberpunk. Was that was it? Were they showing the 4K version? Because I know I, that just came I out and some of that. Think over here. so? I believe so. Yeah, I think probably. it was right when that came out. Yeah, just yeah, that was a beautiful, beautiful rendition. film. Yeah. And the music, the sound in that yep. still holds up to this day. Absolutely. Like, someone, someone. The even... art is a little like you're like okay, I'm seeing the age on the art, mm-hmm. but. That music still to this yeah. day is some of the best soundtracks. The music, the story, it all yeah. holds up. I really saw a well. video about um, Akira not that long ago where uh, someone pointed out like Akira kicked off like so many tropes that like sh- like media uses now, like the uh, the, the motorcycle. The slide. motorcycle. Yep. Well, yep. Yep. Our logo. Yeah. yeah. If you oh, look yeah. at our logo, I mean that's totally yeah Akira. Yep. You know, like I. Uh, I'm not. I'm not proud to say I didn't steal it from them. <laughs> you know, it, it was a big influence in my life, and sure. you know, it was it was a great movie, and still is. So yeah, and then like I don't know if you saw the comparison during COVID. So there's a scene where they're showing the stadium and it's closed, and there's a big sign that says uh, like closed. 1999 or something like that and is or 2000 and whatever that it was set in and it was like closed due to pandemic issues Ooh, they yikes. act the exact same sign was in tokyo when they closed it i mean it was the exact same sign like people were showing side by side pictures that's kind of cool it is pretty it was cool creepy. yeah like, it is creepy that movie was in like early, uh early 90s and yeah like wow they're yeah yeah so is, uh, it was just a cool coincidence is there something you'd like to see like make a comeback or uh, um, something something new from that same I would like to see us get back to a bigger variety when it comes to shows um, and I know it's an unpopular opinion I'm done with isekais I'm done with isekais I can't do another isekai yeah you know I, everybody's reincarnated in whatever vending machine dragon you know you know whatever you want to be reincarnated I'm done I'm done but I want to get us back to like where we have some cyberpunk, where we have some mechs, where we have action, where we have a little more comedy or drama, like just a variety of stuff. Have you got a chance to check out Cyberpunk Edge Runners? Yes. Very good. 
I mean, it's come so on, good. an anime that saved a that like brought back an entire game. <laughs> yeah, you pretty know, much. Yeah, that, that brought that game back to number one as soon as it started playing. Yep. it was good. I, I know Austin hasn't seen it yet. Um, however, I got into this huge discussion with Corey over Edge Runners and how um, like our favorite character is the one character that almost didn't make it in, which was um, Rebecca. Oh, okay. Because the uh, the creator just like. Nah, she's a gremlin. Yeah. Like, no one wants that. Like, <laughs> no, we absolutely want that. That's us. <laughs> yeah, I'd be surprised to see how many characters have made it into, you know, like, some of the characters that make it into shows and their fan favorites that you know the creators were like, oh, that was just a throwaway character. Mm-hmm. So you know there's a lot of those out there, you know. You know, we, uh, oh. Asia Clan Clan from from Outlaw Star was one of those that was always my fan favorite, and she was like a throwaway character. When you talked about, uh, you know, these bootleg uh, anime oh, yeah, videos, yeah. it reminds me of, like, my uncle is 20 years older than me. So he's in his 50s, mid-50s. Mm-hmm. And his first taste of Japanese professional wrestling was the exact same way. <laughs> it's yeah. all bootleg tapes and VHS tapes and the tape trading communities early, early internet and yeah. these message boards. And it's like, okay, I have, you know, this... 90s all japan mixtape and i'll trade you (laughs) ecw you know something and it's basically like that so um and that's how i got into you know japanese wrestling are 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 you into you know all things japanese all things like were you into say power rangers and um and other you know samurai movies kurosawa stuff like that too. i did enjoy the kurosawa movies i mean but they're just so good and i i enjoyed uh japanese horror oh a lot of that um what are some of your favorites uh, um ito right like ito yeah oh jinji ito yeah Yeah. okay i thought you meant the movie i'm like what movie (laughs) um but like um oh and I can't think of the, the one that was like the internet and it was killing people and they remade it in the U.S. They remade it into I Pulse. Yes, thank you. And I can't think of the Japanese name for that for, for, the, for the life of me. Do you remember that was like was? one of the freakiest movies because they never showed anything. Mm-hmm. Like you didn't know who was killing people and what it was going on. And I just I, I can't think of it. And it's like I know I'm going to get off this and I'll be like, oh, it's, that's the name. But yeah. But like that was one of my favorite horror movies because yeah. it was so freaky it was like i was i was terrified of that in event horizon back in, yeah, back in the day I, that movie just messed me up i'm like oh yeah you know. is there something you'd like to see converted into an anime like maybe ooh, something that ooh, good ooh, question yeah like what i like to see converted to an anime yeah hmm it could be. I, uh, I would have said Star Wars earlier, but they've already done that. So yeah. I, I still you know, haven't watched them, but I've heard they're all fantastic. It's, pretty it's good. really good. It's pretty good. Pretty good. The visions, but um, oh man, I don't know. Has there been a Matrix anime? Yeah, there's an Animatrix. But... Animatrix, okay. yeah, but was that's it... like it was kind of like the Batman thing. Okay, it's so, so, it's did, like, sure. okay. so, so, so it's still kind of like visions. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. but I, yeah. I, mean, I, would, I, I, I think you could do some crime thrillers would be really good. Like do a like noir true, kinda do like true detectives as a like a as a oh. anime like a gritty violent anime. That'd be cool. Yeah. Like, I'll ask you from the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah. We've seen a, like Netflix take a lot of animes and turn them into live action. Is there one that you'd like to see turned into live action? Um Dragon Ball Z. I want a good okay, a good one. A good Dragon Ball Z. A one with we can actually and, acknowledge and talk about. And I don't know why we don't have it with um with Pacific Rim, why we haven't gotten an Evangelion live action. Oh sure. Have you seen the Pacific Rim show? Yeah. Yeah, oh, so good. But it's Pacific Rim 2 was Evangelion. I mean, like mm. if you look at those like white robots were totally the the uh, the the Avas from you know, the white Avas that piled on Shinji and them at the end of the movie, that whole scene was like I'm like, this is Evangelion. Like they could easily make this. Oh, I'm absolutely talking to you after after this recording about that. <laughs> but they could have easily made it. They could easily make it now. But I don't know why we haven't gotten that. Like that is one thing that I'm like these are two classics that just need to be made. Yeah. You know, and I know there's works of like the new live action Gundam is I know is in the works. Yep. And I hate to say it. Um, Japan needs to stop making live action adaptations. They're not doing a good job or they need to take the, the one piece approach, the one piece Netflix. Yeah. Where they, they take a season and stretch it out. 
sure. and make a full one season. Like Yu Yu Hakusho was good. I enjoyed it. The action was good, but the they fact crammed, they condensed all of it. Yeah, Full Metal Alchemist, same thing. Crammed all of this into like one movie. You know, I kept talking to my wife about that. I was like, I can't wait to when they get to the Dark Tournament arc. <laughs> That's going to be amazing. And then it was barely mentioned. I was like, what the? F- well, that was the Dark Tournament. Like them fighting yeah. in the the cellar or whatever it was. That was the Dark Tournament. And you're like, what? Like, yeah, yeah. I wanted to see Yusuke like run through the forest. Like, yeah, you know, all of that. Yeah. I wanted to see like I wanted to see him train with the the, the training scene was just horrific. Mm-hmm. Like here you're going to learn this master technique and I know we have never trained you before and here's this top level technique and I'm going to give you all my powers. Goodbye. And I'm like what in the world? Like it, like in the anime it was so earned mm-hmm. and then with the live mm-hmm. action it was just like oh. and and come on that ca- um having her not in it and her snarkiness their their banter back and forth in the series made it. Yeah. Like if you would have taken Yu Yu Hakusho Dark Tournament and given it the the One Piece treatment would have been amazing. What about Cowboy Bebop? Uh, Cowboy Bebop, they made it too much of a buddy cop movie. Okay. Too much Jet. I enjoyed a lot. I, I, I did too. I enjoyed I too. it. It's just... I didn't understand the hate, but, yeah. you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't agree with the hate. I understood the hate, I guess is a better term because... Like, I'm like, it, they still did a good job. Everybody was there. I was excited for season two. I thought um, bringing in um, Ayn and... Edward. Edward, thank you. It was, was going to be fun and stuff like that. But, yeah, I don't... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I just, I, I'm just like... Uh, Part of me is sitting there like, this man broke his back filming this show. And mm-hmm. they're just like, eh, we're done with it. Yeah, because... and But One Piece teaches you. Follow the scripts. Yeah. Go. Don't deviate. Don't deviate. You know, uh, Roroni Kenshin, the live action. If you haven't seen the Roroni Kenshin live nope. action. Oh. Are amazing. They do a great job with those. Resident Evil. Oh, my God. The <laughs> source <laughs> material That's what I'm is about. there. Yeah, Ming yes. Chen. Yeah. So we, I don't know if you know who Ming Chen is yeah. or, mm-hmm. but so he said the same thing. He was like, you know, Resident Evil. I don't understand why there's not a good Resident Evil adaptation. Like it's. It's storyboarded for you. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's all right there. And you try to take your own creative liberties with it, and it fails almost every time. And stop getting big-name actors. We don't need them. Nope. We don't need them. If anything, One Piece proved that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you know sign, sign some no-name for a four-movie contract that you don't have to pay them billions of dollars. Yep. And let them th- – then they, then they become celebrities. Well, on the other side of that, though, you got uh, big name celebrities that are actual fans, and they're like, yes. "No, yeah. look, sure. like Henry Cavill, yeah, um, Ryan oh my Reynolds, God, yes, yeah, uh, you know, Henry Cavill on Warhammer, I, I, I kind of makes me excited. Insane. Kind of makes me excited the fact that he is a big Warhammer fan, and uh, you know, I know there were stories of him walking around um, the Witcher set and being like, "This is wrong, this is wrong, I mm-hmm. can't do this because he wouldn't do that." And, yep, and I'm like, "Let him, let him be him." Like, yep. You're, you've got the knowledge base. Use it. Don't be, yeah. This ignoring the knowledge, the, the, the fandom. I mean, the fandom that knows what they're talking about. Like, there's a lot of fandom that is just hate to hate. You know. Yeah. You know. Yep. You get series that people are like, oh, it's just awful. Blah 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 blah. You know. Yeah. But what um, what what's a gaming um. Probably that's probably your favorite to, to like just either sell here or uh, something that you just enjoy yourself more than anything else for gaming. Yeah, um, you talking video games or yeah, tabletop? Like, yeah, uh, oh, or, video or, games. We'll, we'll go video games and then tabletop. Okay. So there's there's a Japanese game series that I love. It's called Earth Defense Force. Oh, it's so good. Have you played it's it? Such a good. Dude, it's such it, a hokey. It is a mess, but it, it's, yo, it's a mess. It of a knows game. what it is. Yes, it doesn't try to. Be, I mean, they tried a little bit in Dark Rain to be a, like a serious game, but it's still. It is to to best describe it. It is um, Starship Troopers <laughs> video game. That sounds awesome already. You, you get you have a gun, and you run through waves and waves and. You have a gun, and then you get a bigger gun, yeah, and then, and then a bigger gun. Yeah, you have to play the game five, six, eight 
hundred times levels just to get all the guns, and you get all these. You know, I mean, you're firing nukes at Godzilla. <laughs> you're shooting, awesome. it's so you're shooting good. That sounds at, fantastic. Ants and bugs. Think, and, think of it like a uh, goat simulator, but yeah. with like people fighting giant this alien bugs. Awesome already. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it's 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 a great game. I bought I bought a PlayStation Four just to play the new one, <laughs> and I don't play PlayStation. I bought it for that and Spider Man. You know, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna play Spider Man. You know? And then so, I ended up in this man knows and. What the zero something zero dawn? What zero dawn? Horizon? Horizon zero Horizon. dawn? I end up playing that just because I bought the system, Man. and I'm like, sure. Oh, and I loved it. So it wish was my fun. wife yeah. was here. She loves that yeah. game. Yeah. I have Forbidden West. I have yet, like I played a little bit. I have yet to play the rest of it, and it sucks because we're hitting that point <laughs> so, where like new games are coming out now. Yeah. Staying on the video game topic, I know it's mostly anime. Just selfishly, do you ever get anything in from the Yakuza video game series? Because I'm a big Yakuza nerd. Uh, they oh, is there something over yeah, there? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. Yes, but it goes super fast. Whenever uh, we get any sure. Yakuza <laughs> I in, bet. Uh, I actually have a customer in here, and she collects uh, delinquents. That is her, like, Japanese delinquent yeah. guys. Yep. She collects it. Like, we have this one car- series called War- The Worst, and it's very Yakuza-ish. But she collects all these delinquent guys. So she always – if I run across a Yakuza thing, she's always – but yes. I uh, just – my one of my employees in Florida, he loves all the Yakuza games. They're so he's brilliant. like, yeah, yeah. They're I saw so Yakuza. And We're putting it on the order sheet. I just so. remember the first, like, I played uh, Zero. Okay, because it was Zero first, which I should have waited and played, you know, one, two, and yeah. then went back. But whatever, doesn't yeah. matter. Um, I remember before I played it, someone told me it's like a Japanese Grand Theft Auto. And I was like, okay, I'm interested. Then I started playing it. It's nothing like Grand <laughs> Theft Auto. It's so much campier than Grand Theft Auto. And Grand Theft Auto in itself is already pretty campy. But yeah, it is uh, it is almost brutally Japanese. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Some of the, some of the crazy things you can do with, yes. the, with, you know, with the bosses. And you're like, oh, okay. It's, it was the first game. Because usually when I play like RPGs or open world, I play just for the story. And I skip a lot of the side missions. And oh my god, some of the side missions are ridiculous. See, there was a. I'm the opposite. I I I, I will spend hours wandering it's, around. That I, game is what caused me to start. Yeah, taking I, my time with games a little longer. I do side quests before main quests, so yeah, like, I, like, there's so much content there. Um, I showed him a video recently where it's like, um, it was uh, like a dragon, and it was like, this is what I get for skipping a cutscene, and it's um. A character pulls a gun on, on the main character, uh, and then what is his name? It skips the cutscene, goes straight to him go karting. Huh? Yeah. This is like, who? How? Yeah. Yeah. That I don't think I've beaten Elder Rings so because fun. I keep playing side stuff. Yeah. Like I'm still <laughs> yep. like, yeah, I'm, like I'm still in like early Elder Rings because I'm just like, what's over here in this forest? Let me go wander yep. for, for for two hours. I know? still need to find the um, uh, like Jarberg. Where like Alex, the Alexander pot is? Oh, okay. I have no idea where that is. Uh, I can't find I couldn't it. Tell you either. I'm, I I've run around and I'm like, oh, I'm just I, oh, I ran into this, and then my buddy's like, hey, why don't you have this? I'm like, oh, I can get that. <laughs> yeah, didn't you beat the guy out the gate? And I'm like, no, I wandered next to him and just started wandering off onto a corner. And he's like, oh, okay. That's one of my favorite things about Elden Ring is like, you don't mean to fall into something yeah. and, and find a new area, but it just happens. Like, I managed to get across the map and I didn't mean to because I was like, I'm just trying to get around a castle, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I, I can't beat that guy, so I'm just going to wander <laughs> around him. Yeah, I've done that too. Yeah. I'm, I would assume that you were a collector before you were a seller. No. 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 Believe it or not, no. Okay. I, I, people are very surprised that I don't have a collection. Interesting. Because I like to find stuff and then I'm okay with getting rid of it. Okay. So I the, the store is my collection. Sure. So if That's I cool. get something really crazy and unique and I'm like, put it up on the shelf, and then I could be like, oh, I, I, you know, I spent $1,000 on that. I'll get my $1,000 back, and then I'll go find something else really, really cool. So I was going to ask you what was your favorite piece in your collection, but um, I'll, I'll switch. What's well, your favorite thing that you've, you've sold, or what's one of your favorite ooh. things that have come in through the stores? So I had this giant FDS-1 from Robotech that okay. was like um, – I think it was a Bandai. It, it was like, it was a plastic. It was almost like those hollow plastic ones from the eighties. Sure. And it stood probably like two, three feet tall. And it was, it was great. It was, it was, it was, it was an older toy and it was one of my favorite things. And, you know, every time when I get a couple things like that, I'll put like a ridiculous price tag on it. 
and then I won't update the ridiculous price tag. So in a five, six years, that ridiculous price tag starts becoming, oh, that's a good price for that. And then somebody will come in and eventually buy it. Speaking of Band-Aid, aren't, aren't you still uh, chasing the dragon of that uh, original, like, legit Megazord yes. toy? Oh, oh yeah. really? So uh, there, there was a story I told a while back where, um, for years, ever since I was a little kid, uh, my dream every Christmas was to ask for a Power Rangers Megazord. And not like the, the cheap ones where it's like already put together or yeah. stuff like that. I'm talking like the legit good quality where you had to yeah, snap on each set. Yeah, all pieces, yep. Voltron. All of that. That was Voltron for me when my, I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, my mom thought it'd be funny probably when I turned about 30. Um she thought it'd be funny if she got me a Megazord, and it was like a ten dollar, uh, already like put together. Uh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. The one of the smaller plastic ones. Yeah, yeah. some you couldn't take apart, but yeah. like, she's like, "Ha ha! I, you finally got it! Isn't this great?" I'm like, "I'm not even mad. I respect it, but yeah. like, I still want it." Um, but, with uh, so a question that just came to mind was, um, do you try to get uh, collectible figures that, uh. You can't get anymore? Yes. The retro stuff, especially retro stuff. I'm always on the lookout. We, we buy collections. People will bring in their collections. I mean, one of the coolest collections I brought was some mom who was like, hey, this has been under my my stairs for five years. And my, my son went off to college and said I could get rid of it. And he had a crate, a milk crate um, of... Film cells, anime film cells. Wow. No. Trigun, Cowboy Bebop. I had Spike doing the little point, you know, like the point in the wink thing. I had a film cell of that. Holy cow. Uh, Cowboy Bebop is one of my favorite anime. Yeah, so yeah. like, And it was it was beautiful. I mean, I, I sold it for like $700, but, <laughs> but this was like a decade ago. That's amazing. So one of the reasons why I asked was because with um, – a lot of retailers going mm. away from physical releases of like games, yeah, uh, shows and movies and stuff like that, where like you could get uh, a collector's edition and it would come with the, a the collector figure. figure. Or, yeah, the is statues. there a concern that that might hurt your uh, like uh, your business, or do you think that might help because you have access to getting a certain? I I don't know if them going away because print media is dead. Sure. I mean, like DVDs are dead. I mean, like. Yeah, I get occasional person, oh, how come you don't sell the DVDs, DVDs, blah, blah, blah. They're dead, and I don't even look at them for our Florida store um, unless they're in a collector's edition box set with some figure or plushie or some type of item. I won't even look at the box sets. Like, I don't carry your normal, you know, here's the last 12 episodes of this in a box set. I don't even carry those anymore. And even books are getting that way. I mean, books had a nice resurgence during COVID. But now they're going back to the point where they're like, people aren't picking up nearly as many books. They're reading them on iPods and all that good stuff. So, like, print media, yeah. And I'm not worried about the collector's edition, except for when you get stuff like um, Rooster Teeth was a good example. They're yep. Ruby merchandise. They would only release through them. That's what that's what hurts the most is when a company – Bandai is very bad with it, with especially with Red is the Evil stuff. Like, they'll make, oh, this is an exclusive through Bandai store only. Really cool. Like, I know they were doing, like, the leather jacket. Everybody's jacket. They were making them through Bandai, and there was an exclusive jacket. You could buy anybody's jacket, and it was, like, exclusives. That's kind of annoying, but, you know, I, that's like any other market. You know, that company's going to make it. But I don't feel like these collector's editions really hurt hurt anything because there's always going to be the prize figures the smaller ones mm -hmm. that everybody that the new collectors can get into and then you know because i always say you start out with your prize figure that's 35 bucks 45 yep. bucks you get a nice figure you collect a dozen or so of those and then you're like oh i can get rid of these five and get a scale figure okay so i got rid of these five now i can get one 150 dollar figure and then i can go and i get a few of those and then i get rid of those and get the big the big three hundred dollar figure, and then I get rid of those, and I go into those big resin ones that light up and all that crying crazy stuff. But yeah, we're getting very close to the end of our time. Obviously, if uh, our listeners, our viewers, are ever at Mall of America Park in the West Ramp, you know P four level, yep. walk right in, and you're you're right there. I mean, you can see 
almost almost from the front door. Yeah, yeah, you can if, see us right um, there. If we're we're from Iowa, so mm-hmm. if people wanted to check you out online, where would they do so? Uh, AnimeFix.com. Uh, we are our website will be up and running Monday okay. because we had it redesigned over the holiday season. Awesome. Like during between Christmas and we literally shut down on Christmas and then had the web designer redesign it through this weekend. Sure. So, Start fresh. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. It, was, it was part of the new year. Yeah. But yeah, animefix.com or follow us. Just search Anime Fix on any of the social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all of those. And you can order directly through our social media. So if we post something and you're like, oh, crap, I want that and I don't want to have to worry about it, just message us. We'll send you an invoice. We'll ship it That's out to you. That's very cool. We ship it out all the time. Yeah. That's awesome. Especially from the heart of the fine too. stuff. Yeah. That may not go on our website. So if we get a rare item that's – we're only getting one and I know it's going to sell, I won't even bother putting it on the website. That makes perfect sense. I got to yep. put it on, take it off. And, like, you know, it's it's yep. easier just to say, hey, look, here's it on social media. Come get it or have me ship it to you. Yep. Like that. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Bobby, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you guys having me and coming into the store. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Awesome. Cool. Thank you.